Hello students. Today we are going to understand about RC phase shift oscillators. You have learned how the tuned oscillators produce oscillations. In all the cases of tuned oscillators, we had seen that the frequency produced is dependent upon or it is inversely proportional to the values of this 1 by 2 pi is proportional to the value of L and C. So that means if you want to generate low frequency oscillations, you should have high inductance values and high capacitance values. Having high inductance value means actually the uh, oscillator becomes so bulky. So that means it is not practically suitable to make an oscillator um, to produce very low frequencies using the old tuned oscillators because the oscillator will look very bulky. So one of the major oscillator which is used to produce low frequency or audio frequency signals are basically RC phase shift oscillators. Now we'll understand how an RC phase shift oscillator works. And fundamentally, you can understand that there is a usage of RC in this oscillator. That means you use a resistance and a capacitance in this particular network. And where it is used is, it is used in the feedback network. And otherwise, the oscillator remains same as that of any other oscillator. So the one of the fundamental thing which has to be satisfied according to the Barkhausen criterion is that the output produced has to be shifted by 180 degree when it comes to the input side, right? So that can be executed using the RC network. Now I have shown here a simple RC network where you have a capacitance and uh, a resistance in series and you take the you give the input here you can get the output from here so if anything about such a simple network it is found that the output always there is a phase shift between the output and the input by around 90 degree that is the output leads the input by 90 degree ideally speaking but you know that practically the capacitor, capacitor is not an will not be an ideal capacitor so which means that the phase difference between the input and the output will be almost uh, around but, but it, uh, there will be a uh, considerable difference but then it will be less than 90 degree and the phase difference between these two phi if I denote that as that is the phase difference between the input and the output that depends upon the value of the um, Xc that is reactance of the capacitor and the value of the R according to this relation. So the phase difference between the input and the output signal will be equal to tan inverse of Xc by R where you know Xc is the reactance of the capacitor and R is the resistance of this resistor used. So now you can actually uh, using this values or uh, using the uh, you, uh, using the values of the resistance and the capacitor, you can actually make the phase according to your requirement, right? And one of the commonly used uh, such a, a network is, is that which produces, that is a single RC network produces a phase shift of 60 degree. This is one very commonly used phase shift oscillator where a single RC network produces a phase shift of around 60 degree. So that means you know that if you can keep this RC network in the feedback path, uh, once so when the uh, feedback signal passes through the RC network for the first time, it will get shifted by around 60 degree. So which means that if you can cascade such two more RC network along with that, you can create additionally 60 plus 60 more phase difference that is 60 thrice it means that 180 degree phase difference you can make so that is actually how of rc phase shift network works in 
RC phase shift oscillator. Now we'll come to the oscillator part. And this is, as usual, you have a trans bipolar junction transistor, R1. This is basically our R2. Then you have the RE here. Then you have the bypass capacitor here. You have the uh, resistant, uh, capacit RC resistance, which is connected to the collector. You have the coupling capacitor at the output, right? So these are all same. Now you see the output here. From the here, you give the output back to the input, right? So first time when it given it, you can see an RC network. So this RC network will produce a phase shift of 60 degree. And then it passes through here. It will produce a phase shift of again a 60 degree. So that means 120 degree. Again, it passes to this RC network. It will produce a phase shift of another 60 degree. That is totally 180 degree phase shift will be done when it is when it is when pa and passes through this much part of this network and then it goes to the base of the transistor and you know and in a common emitter configuration you will get a additional phase shift of 180 degree right at the output side so this is how uh, an rc phase shift oscillator works and you know that um, this is the one of the important criteria which is required for sustained oscillation to take place. And this, uh, as in the, when you compare this with the other networks where you are using tank, os tank uh, circuit for oscillations and um, for producing the phase shifting. And in the case of um, crystal oscillator, you know that crystal oscillator itself produces a phase shift of an 80 degree. But when you compare those with uh, this particular oscillator, this is a little bit different because here we make use of the RC network uh, which can produce a phase shift of around 60 degree and the cascading such networks you can produce a totally a phase shift of around 180 degree in the feedback network and which is the requirement or which is the necessary condition required for sustained oscillations. Okay, now uh, just uh, mentioning about the frequency of the oscillations produced and here the frequency oscillation of the oscillation should be obviously dependent upon the C and the R value and um, and this here this is equal to 1 by 2 pi hmm, RC then square root of 2 times the number of network used you know here since it is constructed such that you place three networks so that totally a 60 into 3 180 degree phase shift is produced you have n here as 3 so that means this frequency is 1 by 2 pi rc into square root of 6 so this is the frequency produced by an rc phase shift oscillator now one more thing is that it is found that the beta value of this rc phase shift network is equal to 1 by 29 so that means you know that for oscillations to be sustained and initially you should have always at the start of the oscillations we have studied that a beta value should be greater than 1 right so it should be greater than uh, 1 which implies that uh, a upper loop gain a v should be greater than 1 by beta right so that means it should be greater than 29. So that has to be kept in mind while designing this RC phase shift oscillator. So this is all about the working of an RC phase shift oscillator where you make use of a simple RC network to produce a phase shift and cascading um, the required amount of uh, required networks. You can produce a phase shift of 180 degree as it is required in the feedback part of an oscillator. And uh, this is uh, very commonly used to produce audio frequency or low frequency oscillations. Okay, this is uh, all about RC phase shift oscillator. Thank you.